This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hello everybody and welcome to what is probably going to be many Japanese art supply videos. If you don't follow me on any other social media, you probably don't know that I have temporarily moved to Japan for a few months because why not? As an artist, Japan is probably the best place to visit, so I have been super excited to explore all of the different art supply stores, and our first victim are these little guys. These are the Kuretake Zig Clean Color Dot Markers, and I'm sure these are probably just your run-of-the-mill markers. Every kid in Japan uses them, but as someone not from Japan, I, I had to try them. Okay, so let's take our markers out. Here we go. So they do seem pretty basic. Let's see, let's take out our light blue here. We have a dual marker. So on one side, we do have a fat round end and our other side, we have a more pointed, smaller, fine tip for more detailed areas. I'm already in love with the names of these colors. This one is Blue Bonnet, and here is, oh, nice and juicy. I just love when you press down really hard and the ink all comes out, but then you let go and it gets sucked back into the marker. Our yellow is called Summer Sun. You know, instead of Winter Sun, or spring sun or fall sun. No, this is, this is summer sun. They did seem kind of bright and obnoxious at first, but honestly they have a nice pastel look to them. We have some dark blues, nice reds and greens, and I think these are gonna be really fun to play around with. Before we get into anything too serious, I thought it would be fun to sort of doodle around and just play around with different techniques that you can get from these markers because they're 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 not your normal markers i suppose they're kind of i wouldn't really say they're gimmicky as much as they just have an interesting way to be used maybe so i just want to play around and see what we can't come up with wow that is that is a lot of ink oh my goodness okay so i thought it'd be fun oh wow that's so bright i feel like Wow, when you really press down and you flick the marker, you definitely get a different, a different vibe. Is that even the right word for it? And just see how these markers work differently in general. They're really fun to flick. These could be, this could be grass. Look, we can make an ant. <laughs> a very crude drawing using dots to make my ants. What happens if we try to draw people? Okay, interesting. Maybe we can give her bangs. Ooh, and then maybe even her dress can be bubbly. She's kind of cute. Wait, she needs shoes. Let's give her some shoes. Wow, beautiful. I am artist. I wonder how easy it would be to make fire. So say we did this. We flick it into the yellow. Ooh! So yeah, let's get into sketching some ideas and see what we can actually come up with using these dot markers. Didn't think I would be excited to play around the dots, but I'm excited. So let's get into it. So starting off our first piece, and to be honest, every piece in this video, I, is this cheating? I took the markers to a palette and took out some of the ink, added some water, and used a brush to apply them to the paper. I knew that if I was going to be using these markers to create full illustrations and not just use them as simple little doodles, I was going to have to add a few other materials like water and a brush. I didn't do anything crazy, I just created a gradient from the white paper to the darkest blue by adding more and more layers and more and more ink. I think it looks really simple and really nice. For for a simple illustration that focuses on simple shapes and simple details, I think having a textured gradient background is really nice and I think it was perfect. 
So by far my favorite discovery when playing around with these dot markers was definitely the fire. I was super excited to create an illustration with some sort of fire. I wasn't sure what, but I knew I definitely wanted to play around with that technique. So when it came to using these markers because they are such a gimmick, but only a small gimmick, only half of the marker is a gimmick because the other side is a normal pen tip. But when it came to using the dots, I knew I just really wanted to focus on incorporating them into a very small, simple, yet effective illustration. I wanted to try to use these markers in a way that I would actually use them, but also really fully embracing the fact that these are dot markers. Maybe they aren't specifically used to create fully illustrated pieces. Maybe they are more for doodles or bullet journals, but my gosh, was I not going to make them work. So like I mentioned, I really wanted to make something with a flame. So I wanted to create this really simple scene of maybe the wind blowing some pollen from some plants. I wanted to use the plants from their techniques. And of course the flame. I wanted to have a flame blowing in the wind and having sparks floating away and just having this very simple yet effective illustration. But I couldn't just have a few pieces of grass and a flame. So I wanted to create a character and again going from our tests. I created a ladybug creature with a cute bun hairstyle holding this flame. What does it represent? I have no idea, but I think it just turned out really simple yet really effective. And to pull everything together and not have it too simple, I have some ladybugs in the background flying away. This definitely looks like the start of some sort of adventure or movie or story and it just gives off a really good vibe and I think I'm really happy with it. First doodle, a success. Dot Doodle starts off with, you guessed it, another white to blue gradient. But this time I wanted to go a little bit darker and create a little bit of a scary or dark mood, but I really found that it was hard to get a dark gradient with these markers. You could get a really nice dark color if you flicked the pen, but if you use the pen in any other way, it seemed like it was really hard to build layers and get that really dark solid ink. So unfortunately I wasn't able to get too dark of an environment, but it was probably for the best. That way you could see these fish a little bit easier. So this time we are definitely going deep inside the ocean and I wanted to obviously embrace the flicking motion of these markers because it seemed like one of the biggest uses or techniques that you could get out of these dot markers. I think they created a really fun and simple shape, something that obviously really matched with my style already. So luckily for me with these markers, they do work with a more simple art style and I love a simple art style because you can get really effective fun shapes and simple characters that are easy to fall in love with without adding too much detail. Really focusing on environments and not so much character designs. I love a good character design but sometimes really simple colorful shapes really make a good illustration. I really enjoyed adding the light of our underwater creature. What are they called? Anglerfish, building the yellow lights and adding the orange was really fun. I love the stylization of the light. But again, when it came to filling in a really large area with a dark ink, filling in just wasn't easy with these markers. I don't know if they weren't meant for filling in sections or if by making my paper wet, it just made it really hard. And if the paper was even 1% a little moist, it started to fall apart and the markers didn't want to put the ink on the paper and they were picking up paper and not easy to work with. Either way, I was able to flick my way through this angler fish monster and fill it in. So it turned out okay, especially the teeth. Flicking the marker for the teeth shape turned out very spooky and very fun. So. Again, really enjoying these markers. Okay, we've got to get away from these blue gradients. 
What do you guys say we get a little crazy, a little wild, and do a yellow to orange to red gradient? So it was definitely a lot more fun to add multiple colors into our gradient instead of just going from a clear water to a blue ink. We went from yellow to orange to red, and oh my gosh, that yellow was very pigmented, and I had to water it down so much because it was just so bright and so vivid. I mean, good for the marker for being very pigmented, but... Whew, it, it was a little much. So this is definitely my favorite gradient of the batch. And this was a really interesting illustration. I knew I wanted to do something, again, creating a scene, creating an environment, and just keeping it very simple and letting the markers and the silly techniques speak for themselves. So I did a lot of the flicking motion to add grass and texture and shading, which was really nice. Those simple colors really work together. I have to say, I was really skeptical about the markers not only with their somewhat gimmick, but also the color choices for only 12 markers. I really found that the colors were really nice. They weren't obnoxious. They weren't super pastel. There was a lot of pigment. And I was able to create quite a few scenes using just these few colors. So again, keeping it simple, we have a field of grass with a really nice sunset in the background. And from there, I just added dots to create little weird creatures floating around. If you didn't notice for all of these illustrations, I didn't sketch anything. I just kind of started putting ink down and just didn't plan and wanted to see where I went. So wherever I went, I went. So after creating the little tiny dot creatures floating around in the grass, I created a very large dot dragon in the background. And I think it just added, again, another mysterious element to a very simple yet effective background or environment. Dare I say it? So far I'm three for three. I actually really like all of these doodles so far. Though looking back on this one in particular, it probably could have used a character looking up at the dragon in a mysterious way. Maybe someone standing in the grass. It just needs that extra little push of a storytelling aspect. But other than that, I really like this one. <laughs> On to our fourth and final doodle, we are bringing back the blue to white gradient. I think I was just really feeling those blues. They are very nice blues. But this is the only illustration that I had absolutely zero, no plan. I didn't know where I was going to go with it, but I started off with a blue to white gradient sky using a lot of dry brushing technique to create some lovely textures. I love it. And then I tried to push an absolutely dark gradient because at this point I was kind of getting sick of that really sad mid-tone gradient. I wanted to really try to push a super dark gradient. So I tried to do some flicking motion near the top to get that pure dark ink, but it was still slightly wet, which tore up the paper. It completely just pilled it up and made a lot of chunks of paper come up. And so I kind of felt like I needed to hide that messed up paper by just creating so much texture that you would never be able to see that I destroyed the paper. So I started to layer a bunch of dots and just creating texture. But at this point, I still really wasn't sure where I was going with this doodle. So I just kind of went for it. I thought the texture was really interesting with all of the dots and I kind of wanted to keep it simple. So I just added a balloon, just a single red colorful balloon at the middle of the page at the bottom, getting sucked up into this weird dot tornado thing. I don't know what's happening here, but it's just a very simple doodle that I thought was really fun. It played with the dot texture. Now I kind of wish I added a bunch of different balloon colors, but either way, this one's simple. It's mysterious. Maybe if I wasn't so dead inside and had more emotion, this could probably represent something a little deeper, but unfortunately for me, it's just a balloon floating up into some weird dot tornado, so that is literally all this represents. But hey, you know what? If you have a theory, type it in the comments. Maybe you have a better representation of a balloon getting sucked up into dots? Anyways, that is it for our final dot doodle. So that is it 
for one of many Japanese art supplies I am going to be trying here in Japan. And even though I'm all the way in Japan, away from my home country, what better place to display my new creations to the world than an online portfolio by Squarespace? Either display your works publicly or, and I just saw this super neat feature, create custom galleries that are password protected to share private works with clients. I mean, dang. That's pretty neat. Automatic image scaling, easy image importing, and 24-7 email support are just a few of the features Squarespace offers to make the creation of your website easy and professional. Head to squarespace.com slash CaseyGolden or use code CaseyGolden for a free trial and save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and thank you so much for watching. Stay golden. Bye.